Jesus says, it is so hard for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. We are so filthy, filthy, filthy rich. And yet most of you would say that you're not. What the Bible says, what Jesus says, is you, you, you're rich, and that's a huge disadvantage for you. Luke 18, verse 18, he, a certain ruler asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Okay, so there's this rich man who wanted to go to heaven, right? That's us. That's why you're in this room, right? You're a rich person that wants to go to heaven. Verse 19, why do you call me good? Jesus answered, no one's good except God alone. You know the commandments. Don't commit adultery, don't murder, don't steal, don't give false testimony, honor your father and mother. Verse 21, all these I've kept since I was a boy. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, you still lack one thing. Sell everything you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he became very sad because he was a man of great wealth. Jesus looked at him and said, How hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of God. Indeed, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Those who heard this asked, Who then can be saved? And Jesus replied, What's impossible with men is possible with God. You see, the kingdom of heaven is not like the rich young ruler who said, man, I got my wealth. He's telling me to give it to the poor. I don't know, man. He went away sad. What is the kingdom of heaven like? The kingdom of heaven is like a man who finds a treasure in a field, right? And, and he sees this treasure. It's so great that he covers it back up. And he goes, man, let me just get rid of everything else I have because I want that field so badly. He doesn't have to sit there and think about it and go, man, I don't know if it's worth it. It says, with great joy, you found, you get it. You see that the treasure is that great that oh, I don't even have to think. This isn't compare. This isn't a, let me weigh it out, what's more valuable. With great joy, let me just sell everything I have and get this field. Chapter 19, verse 1, Jesus entered Jericho. And he's passing through. And a man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man, he couldn't because of the crowd. So he ran ahead, climbed up a sycamore fig tree to see him since Jesus was coming that way. Remember the story? And then when Jesus reached his spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once, welcomed him gladly, and all the people saw this and began to mutter, he's gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I've cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house. See, but that's so rare. You see, because money does weird things to people. It just does. I've heard people say that many times. Haven't you heard that? Hear that statement? Have you used that statement? Man, weird, money does weird things to people. One statement I have yet to hear in my lifetime. Money has done weird things to me. It's always someone else, huh? You guys, money has done weird things to us. Money has done very weird things to us. Accept it. See, Jesus says that the thing with money is it, it gives you this, this false sense of security. You start feeling safer the more you have, rather than finding your security in God. The more you have, the less you're inclined to believe that you're needy. Jesus wrote these seven letters to the churches in the book of Revelation. He writes these seven churches, and one of them was a pretty wealthy one. And when I read the letter, I just go, wow, that's America. This is a letter to the church in America. It freaks me out how similar it is. A lot of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. It's a church in Laodicea in Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. It's, it's, it's crazy when you read this, you go, man, that's so us. 
And that's scary because it's not a nice letter. He says in Revelation 3, verse 14, he says, To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. Verse 15, I know your deeds, that you're neither cold nor hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. It's simple. Jesus says to this church, you're not hot, you're not cold, you're just kind of lukewarm, just kind of casual about me. I feel like just spitting you out of my mouth. You make me gag. It's, it's, it's not like a hot cup of coffee. It's not like an iced mocha. You're just like this lukewarm coffee. I, I sip it by accident. I just, oh, that's disgusting. He goes, that's what I think of your church. Because you're not fired up about me. You're not on fire. You're lukewarm. And a lot of it is because they're rich. You see it in the next verse, verse 17. He says, you say, I'm rich. I've acquired wealth. I don't need a thing. He goes, but you don't realize that you're wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, naked. I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire so you can become rich and white clothes to wear so you can cover your shameful nakedness and salve to put on your eyes so you can see. See, this church, they were kind of laid back about God because they didn't feel like, oh, I'm depending on God. God, give me this day, my daily bread. Now, that's not us. That's the last time you're like, oh, God, give me something to eat today. No, it's like, well, I don't really need God for my food. I don't really need God for my home. I don't really need God to give me money for the rest of it because I, I got my whole retirement set up. And I've got money to leave for my kids so they don't even have to depend on God. None of us really need to depend on Him for our daily necessities. He goes, it creates this sense of security to suddenly you feel like you're not a needy person. And God says, they don't get it. They really are the needy ones because of their view of me, because they're not on fire. If I were to ask you, okay, are you on fire for God right now or are you lukewarm? I think a lot of you would say you're lukewarm. What concerns me more than the fact that you're lukewarm is that some of you would say, yeah, I am lukewarm. And then you'll walk out the door and you'll do nothing about it. What concerns me the most is that some of you are lukewarm. You know you're lukewarm, but you want to be lukewarm. I mean, I look at the majority of the American church. They don't want to be on fire. They want a little bit of God. Of course they want God. I want a little bit of God. I mean, it's good. It's good for my kids. It's good to give them a little bit of morals. It's good to, you know, learn to give a little bit here and there, serve a little bit. But I've got enough of God. I don't have enough money. I don't got enough stuff. I don't got a big enough house. I, I need more of that. But I've, I think I've got enough God in my life right now. And it's crazy. Not only are you lukewarm, but that's the goal. You're lukewarm and you're loving it. And you hate for anyone to challenge you to be on fire for God. People have asked, well, does it necessarily mean that if I'm lukewarm that I'm going to hell? Because if you're spit out of his mouth, can you be spit out of his mouth and still be saved? I'm going, well, you read it. Now. Look at the words. Okay, you're wretched, pitiful, poor, Blind? Are, are these words that you normally use for a believer? And this isn't about work salvation. It's not about, okay, if I work enough, then I'm suddenly on fire. No, I'm saying if you get it, the kingdom of heaven is a person who goes, whoa, you're kidding me. Okay, here, here's everything. I'm, I'm getting this treasure here. It's not about a person going, I don't know, that's pretty good. I, that's pretty good too. I don't know what I want. There's God, there's the world, there's God, there's... I don't know. God says, oh, you, you, you make me want to gag. So, so you're looking at me, okay, the maker of the world, and then you on this little planet, you're looking at this little house here in this little car and going, man, I don't know if I can give that up or retirement for a few years. And you comparing me, the creator, the one who made the whole world, who spoke it into existence. And you're going, ooh, I don't know if I can give out this little thing on this piece of dirt for him. He goes, that makes me sick. You make me want to gag. I just want to spit you out of my mouth. 
See, my, my, my concern is that the people will see themselves as lukewarm because we do this in church all the time. Yeah, I'm lukewarm. And then 10 minutes later, you're going to forget about it and move on in life. And I just go, what else is there to think about? Okay, so, so you understand what lukewarm is, so you're going to be spit out of the mouth of God. You, you just go, okay. I go, man, you shouldn't do anything until you figure out how to be on fire for God. You should be down on your face. You shouldn't eat again until you come before God and just fast and pray, God, get me on fire. I'm not on fire. You got to get me on fire for you. I want to be in love with you. I got to see how valuable you are compared to all this other junk. You know, get me here. That should be all you care about. Don't go to work tomorrow if you're lukewarm. Why is God saying this? He goes, because I love you. I don't want to spit you out of my mouth. You understand? I love you and that's why I'm speaking so harshly and I'm rebuking you. He goes, and I'll discipline you too. I'll have things happen in your life to get your attention because you're lukewarm. And if you end this way, I'm just going to spit you out of my mouth because that's disgusting. It's repulsive to me. I have this fear that some of you, possibly many, many of you, are going to hell. It keeps me up at night. you understand the reality of what I said? I'm talking about hell. Have you heard that word so many times that you just have grown numb to it? Eternal punishment. I sure hope you don't see this as well. Francis is up there judging the congregation saying he's safe. I'm not saying that. I'm saying I'm willing to bet some of you would leave this room and say it about yourself that you are lukewarm, meaning you're going to be spit out of the mouth of God and cast into the fires of hell. That's all I'm saying is what you would say about yourself. And it blows me away that, that some of you, you won't do anything. You see, because to me, I just go, whatever, God, I got to get this right. This is all that matters. It's everything. You can't end your life lukewarm. Do you get that? I, I hope you're that serious about this. Are you an overcomer? Is that you? Have you overcome this world? <laughs>